Now, we've received a handful of emails from you at home really questioning the steps Connecticut is taking to prevent voter fraud in this year's election. It's always an important topic, but this year there are even more questions because all voters have the opportunity to vote absentee because of the pandemic. The emails keep coming in. An application for a Connecticut absentee ballot sent to someone who has died. An application sent to a person living in another state for the past three years. And an application sent to a woman using her maiden name. They're all pointing out errors in the system, but the secretary of the state's office says there are most likely reasons behind each one. Town uh, registrars are the ones that keep up the lists. And they're not always up to date. Uh, but frankly, that's not a problem as long as that dead person doesn't vote. The office says sometimes voters don't update their information or that information doesn't make it to the towns. If a voter dies in another state and that state doesn't share information with Connecticut or the town, registrars have no way of knowing that person passed away. The same if someone moves out of state but doesn't update his or her voter information. After four years of not voting, a Canvas postcard goes out, and if it's not returned, that voter is removed from the state's list. If you register to vote in another state, you're automatically removed from Connecticut's voter rolls. Our lists are actually pretty good by national standards. Connecticut and 29 other states share information through the Electronic Registration Information Center, or ERIC. As for the questions Fox 61 has been receiving about voter fraud, we asked the Secretary of the State what safeguards are in place to ensure that no one can break the law and vote under the name of a person who moved or died. I would caution people, don't even begin to think about sending in an application for an absentee ballot for someone who has passed away. The best thing you can do if you get that is let the registrars know that that person should be taken off the list. It's also a felony in Connecticut, which carries up to five years in prison and a $5,000 fine, not to mention the federal and civil rights charges that could be brought against you. The office says because of the systems in place and information sharing nationwide, it would show up that the person voted twice. It would come back to Connecticut via ERIC, national change of address data, or when the person registered to vote at his or her new address many, many checks and balances in place to make sure that doesn't happen. By the way, there is absolutely no evidence that it happens on even a minor level in Connecticut. While the municipalities and the state really take these steps to ensure accurate voter rolls, there are 2.2 million registered voters here in Connecticut. To make sure that your information is correct, you can log on to myvotect.gov slash lookup, then follow up with any changes that need to be made before the election. And we want to make sure that you have all the information you need to make sure that your vote counts. Text the word vote to 860-527-6161 and we will be text you back with a link to the Fox 61 voter guide. We have information there on the registration deadlines, those absentee ballots, and much more to answer all your questions. Again, you can just text the word vote to 860-527-6161.